Zero Accounting Software 2023. Purchase and finance equipment and organize multiple loan accounts. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Acer 27 inch monitor. I've been using an Acer monitor as my primary monitor for a few years now. This is the first Acer monitor that I have used after having used a series of different brands of monitors in the past. The Acer monitor has been performing well and I'm trusting the Acer brand more and more as I use the monitor. I have a 27 inch monitor, which I think is ideal for what I do, which is of course the screen recording and the editing. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. In our custom Zero home page, going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, get great guitars. Duplicating some tabs to put the reports in like we do every time, right clicking the tab up top and duplicating it. And then we're going to right click on the tab and duplicate it again to put the balance sheet and income statement in place. Back to the middle tab, accounting drop down, we want the balance sheet. Back to the tab to the right, accounting drop down the income statement, but we're picking the comparative income statement. If you don't have it, you can just open a normal income statement, the comparative income statement, comparing the month we're working on, February to the prior month, January. Back to the tab to the left, we're going to go to the date drop down now, customizing that date, bringing it to 2023, the end of it, and update after the date has been changed. Okay, so now we're going to be purchasing equipment, this time financing the purchase of equipment. So a couple things that we're going to have to deal with here. One's going to be a loan account that we're going to have to deal with as we have the purchase because we're financing it. In other words, we're not paying just cash for it. We're taking a loan out for uh, the purchase and obviously the fixed asset account will be impacted as well. Now, a quick note with the equipment. Remember that when we purchase something, if we're purchasing supplies, the normal transaction would be uh, an increase to the expense account typically, and the other side being a decrease, say, to a cash account. However, if we're purchasing a large piece of equipment, we have to deviate from the cash-based system, even if we're using a cash-based system usually, because there's such a big change or difference between the time frame in which we pay for the equipment and the time frame that we use the equipment in order to generate revenue. So in the United States, for example, uh, even if you're on a cash based system, you're going to have to do taxes. And for taxes, they're going to force you to put it on the books as an asset and then depreciate it, which is an accrual type of concept as opposed to a cash based uh, type of uh, concept. So just remember, whenever you're using a cash based system, uh, it's not really a pure, we're never really using like a pure cash based system because there's some things that we might do an accrual thing for, such as uh, equipment, because again, the timing difference between when we use the equipment and when we purchase it is so great. Also note that when we purchase the equipment for something other than cash, say we finance it, we're going to put it on the books as equipment, not because we didn't pay for it. It's not because if we're on a cash based system, we're going to put it on the books until we pay for it. That's that's not why it's going to be an asset instead of an expense. It's going to be an asset. It would be an asset, as we saw in the in the prior month transaction, even if we paid cash for it, because we have to do this accrual uh, kind of thing. Now, on the liability side, we already have a loan outstanding. Now, if you're in the kind of industry that has 
a lot of different uh, purchases of equipment, like a construction business, for example, you might have a bunch of different loans out that you have for different pieces of equipment and so on and so forth. And so you would need to organize your loans. Now the loans get kind of messy to organize uh, because there's reporting requirements that are a little bit have different needs than possibly your internal bookkeeping needs. So for example, from a reporting standpoint, we need to be breaking out short-term and long-term loans. Uh, and that's kind of a mess because some loans might have a short-term and long-term component to them, such as normal installment loans. If you pay off a loan every month, you have short-term amount that's gonna be due, that's gonna be due within a year. You have a long-term amount that's gonna be due, the amount that's due after that year. You don't wanna to have to break out from a bookkeeping standpoint, however, the short-term and the long-term portion of the loan every time you do a transaction. And therefore we would probably, I would suggest only do that periodically at the end of the period as an adjusting entry. So we'll see that in the adjusting entry area. The other thing about the loans is that we're usually gonna have an amortization table to help us track the interest and the principal as we saw in a prior presentation when we built amortization uh, schedules. Now, with the amortization schedules, that'll help us to break out per payment interest and principal. But remember that, that the fact that we have to break out interest and principal and they differ from payment to payment still makes it a little bit difficult for us to automate the loan payments. So you might come up with a system where you just record loan payments uh, to the loan account and then make periodic adjustments at the end of the year. We'll talk about that more in future presentations when we get to adjusting entries. Also, uh, when for reporting purposes, for external reporting purposes, we usually only want one short-term and one long-term loan. But from a bookkeeping side of things, it's quite useful to have a different loan account per loan and only one loan account instead of two loan accounts per loan so that you can tie out the amortization schedule to what is on the books to make sure that everything is, is being properly recorded. So we could make like a parent subsidiary account type of relationship, have possibly a loan payable account and then list all of our other loans underneath it so we can collapse that account. And that's what we'll first take a look at. And the way we do that here is a little bit different than other popular software like QuickBooks Online. In QuickBooks Online, you have a sub account kind of structure. Here, you actually have a little bit more flexibility with it, although it might take a little bit longer to kind of understand the concept, but I think it's a really good uh, way that Zero has to do that. We go to the edit, the edit layout tab in here and we can format our groups, kind of like the group has been formatted here. We can format uh, a group for our, our liabilities and then we can kind of memorize our report that has the proper grouping in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna create the proper accounts and have a different account and then we'll go back in here and we will group it so that we have this collapsing kind of feature that we can see in our reports. All right, so let's do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring this back. I'm gonna cancel this and let's go to the first tab and let's go to the accounting dropdown to do this and go into our chart of accounts. So I'm gonna go into my liability accounts. So, and again, I really like that Zero has this kind of layout up top. I've kind of gotten uh, uh, to the point where that is uh, uh, something I, I quite appreciate because uh, in other software such as, such as QuickBooks, uh, if, you, if you have a long chart of accounts and you don't have this breakout up top, every time you do something, you have to go all the way back to the top of the forms. Whereas here you've got it, you've got, you can break it out by section. So I'm liking that more and more that I use it. Uh, in any case, if we go down to the loan payable, I'd like to make this loan payable account a, like a subsidiary type of account for a specific loan. So I'm gonna change that one first and then I'm gonna create other loan payable account, which will be the parent account, uh, so that I can kind of put this subordinate to the parent account. So I'm gonna make another account, which I'm gonna call like uh, 2350, let's say, uh, or let's say, yeah, 22350. And then, well, let's first go into this one. I'll edit this one. And let's actually change, maybe I can change this 
to two four uh two four two zero and then instead of calling it loan payable i'm going to call it uh uh chase loan so i'm going to say chase loan now in practice if you're listing out your loans then you might have to, you might list out your loans individually by the financial institution but sometimes that's not enough detail because you might have multiple loans with the same financial institution so you might differentiate each loan by taking the last four digits of the load number not the first four digits the last four digits because those are the ones that are more likely to be distinguishable from other loans all right so we're going to say let's save that and so so now i'm going to make a parent account uh which is going to be the loan payable just a loan payable parent account at 2400 so i'm going to add a new item up top add an account account code number 2400 it's going to be an other current liability account so liability current uh current liability account i should say and it's going to be just called loan payable this will be the parent kind of account when we make our grouping so i'm going to say okay save that so now we've got these these two next to each other because the numbers are next are next to each other and then i'm going to make another one which i'll call two four uh three zero now note that you want to kind of space out your account numbers to some degree uh at least so you have some so you have some room to put loans in between them you know if you want so, but I'm just gonna make it two, four, two, four, three, zero. Well, let's make it, yeah, two, four, three, zero. So I'll say, all right, another one, add account, two, four, three, zero. It's gonna be a liability account and uh, current liability. And I'm gonna say, this is gonna be the other loan, which I'm gonna say is with B of A, B of A. This is the loan we're going to take out to finance the new purchase we're going to make now with a second loan when we purchase the piece of equipment not for cash but financing the whole thing so i'm going to say okay let's save that so so now we've got the loan payable we've got a uh, uh, chase loan and then the b of a loan so now if i go into my balance sheet over here i can update my balance sheet and all it's showing at this point in time on the balance sheet is the chase loan but i'd like to have that kind of drop down it being kind of like a subsidiary account of the loan payable account so i can go into my edit layout let's see if i can figure this out and i want to make a group so i'm going to go into here into my loan payable okay so i'm going to be picking this one this one and i had to update the report by the way to to show all these and then the loan payable and then as i select those by the way i'm selecting them by holding down control as i select each of these items so this one holding down control so i could select non-adjacent or not next to each other cells and then we've got the group selection so i can then say group them and so there they have it now notice i added this group name because i'm kind of used to the to this other sub sub account i didn't need to add this loan payable account because i have the group uh title up top so notice that was kind of redundant of me so i can go in and actually delete that uh the row heading i'm going to call loan payable and then uh so this is correct uh credit positive because it's a liability and then opening balance total okay so there it is so i think that should do it so there's the loan payable let's group it oh hold on a sec i'm gonna undo uh that last bit so i added another group here let me see if i can just delete that okay so there we have it <laughs> so it's accounts payable and uh and then we've got our loan group which i can collapse or expand so cool okay so let's update the layout so if i go into my layout now i can see that and let's check it out and so now down here i've got the current liabilities and then i've got the loan payable so I, again i think this is kind of neat that it's able to do this a little bit differently than other software like a quickbooks online that i don't have to have the parent account that i can sometimes post stuff to which kind of messes up the sub account kind of structure because you can't post anything to the title 
here because it's a separate title. So I can actually go back to my tabs over here and this loan payable account, I don't need that one. I can check that one and say, I'm gonna just delete that one because uh, I don't need a parent account because we have a whole different system going on here, which I uh, I think is works quite well. It's actually more flexible than some other systems. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna finally record the purchase of the equipment. So we're purchasing uh, furniture and equipment, and the other side isn't gonna be a decrease to cash, but rather an increase to the loan. Now. This is not a transaction that happens all the time. So when we think about how we're gonna record something, usually we're gonna say, okay, if I hit the drop down, is there a form that is designed for the purchase here? Well, there's not a form that's usually designed to purchase uh, equipment because equipment is not a normal day-to-day -day transaction. It doesn't happen all the time. We only purchase it periodically. So then we could say, well, is cash affected? Because then I can use a, a decrease to cash, a spend money form. But in this case, we're not spending any money. We're financing the entire thing. And therefore, that's when you usually have to default to a journal entry. So we're going to enter this basically uh, with a journal entry, which is the last thing you want to use, because usually you want to use the data input forms to do the data input so that the system can manage anything else uh, that needs to be happening. Also, as we purchase the equipment, remember that you want to try to set up your equipment accounts so they match the sub ledger that you'll be creating, which will be your depreciation schedules, which in the United States is often done in an external software like tax software, because you have to do depreciation for taxes and the calculations for depreciation for taxes are different than, than book depreciation oftentimes. Therefore, even if you have perfect depreciation schedules in your accounting software, you still have to do them externally in the tax software. So it's kind of easiest to use the tax software to calculate both the tax depreciation. And if you want different schedules for book depreciation to use it to do the book depreciation as well, and then do subsidiary, you know, adjusting entries, which we'll talk about in future courses or sections. So as we put the equipment on the books, this is like a depreciation schedule from a tax software and note that you want to break out as best you can what you are actually purchasing and possibly put the receipt of what you're purchasing in the documentation so you can provide that to your tax preparer so they can put it in the system not as one lump sum of just like furniture and equipment and then one lump sum but rather in a detailed way so you can tie out to what you actually purchased, which isn't as important when you first put it on the books because you'll still be able to do your taxes and whatnot on the purchase side. But later when you sell or dispose of the property, if you don't know which property you sold or disposed of on the depreciation schedules, that's when you run into a problem and the problem was created because you didn't put it on the depreciation schedule separately item by item and or in a way that you can tie out to. So you wanna give this detailed information to your accountant. That sounds quite tedious, but it's not too bad because you only have to give them the changes to your furniture and equipment, uh, which shouldn't have too much activity in it because we don't buy furniture and equipment or fixed assets, property, plants, and equipment, depreciable assets too often. Okay, that said, let's go to the first tab and do our journal entry. So I'm going to go to the plus drop down and let's do a uh, a journal. And actually, we have to find the journal entries by going to the accounting reports. And then we go into the journal report journal. They kind of bury the journal entry. We go into the journal reports, which is probably good because you don't want to enter them all the time. But and then we're going to add a new journal. Uh, so we're going to add a journal. This is going to be for the purchase of equipment that we financed the date that this happened we're going to say 227 again feb 27 let's say feb 27 and uh default so we're not going to do a reversing entry default narration to journal line description okay and then we're going to say that we increased the furniture furniture and equipment. And we're gonna say we're gonna purchase $5,000 of furniture and equipment. 
and the other side is going to go to the B of A, B of A, a loan account that we just set up. So this will be an increase debit increase to the equipment. If you don't know your debits and credits, then you know if you get it going the wrong way, not a big deal because you'll, you'll figure it out and you can just switch your debits and credits. But liabilities going up with a credit, equipment's going up with a debit. All right. So let's save it and close it, and then we'll just check it out. It. So we're going to go to the balance sheet and update it and check it out it so we're going to go into the furniture and equipment is now at 103 uh what does this leave did i not update it save update go in here okay leave i don't know why you're telling oh that's because i changed the format uh i made a custom report i know why okay so there's the 5000 looks good journal entry has been made uh, the other side go into the loan account. Okay, back up. And the other side... Break on back to the other side. Breaking back to the other side. That's a song. I don't, I don't think I'm singing it right. The other side is 5000 in the B of A account. Right there. So no impact thus far on the income statement even though we purchased equipment not because we didn't pay cash for the equipment mind you we still wouldn't have recorded any expense if we paid cash for it when will we have an expense related to this purchase when we record the depreciation with adjusting entries which for small businesses often happens at the end of the year with the help and use of tax software because the tax software is going to help us to generate our subsidiary ledgers uh, but you might do it monthly as well all right, let's open up the trustee trial balance. Let, we might save this balance sheet uh, here because we had... Uh, see, now I lost my grouping. See, my grouping went away. So let's save my custom balance sheet. So I'm going to edit this thing and uh, format it the way I like it. These two holding down control and group those ones. Por favor. This is going to be... Uh, this is going to be... Uh, loan payable is the grouping that we're looking for and uh, group it all right I think I can update the form and if I scroll down did it do it it did it now now I can collapse that if I wanted to by going into the edit layout and for external reporting I could collapse it like this boom and that would be good for external, but I'm going to open it up this way for the internal and uh, cancel that update. And then let's memorize this report. Let's put some memorization. Uh, we're going to save as a custom, custom balance sheet, balance sheet, uh, standard, custom, custom standard. Because I don't want to change. I'm not going to make it make custom report the default i kind of could i should because that's kind of the custom but i'm not gonna instead i'm going to just save it that way and then i'm going to go into because i don't like to change i'd rather keep the default setting report the way it is so i'm going to go into my reports here and just put a little star uh because i could say maybe i don't want a star by the normal balance sheet but instead in my custom balance sheet i'll put a little star uh next to that one and so then when I go to my accounting drop down, it has the balance sheet custom in the defaults. So that looks good, but I didn't mess up the original one so that if I want to start from it and make another custom report, I totally can. All right, let's open up the trial balance. We're running long on time. You're running long on time. The clock is ticking. You're breaking your own rules, man. We got to get out of here. You're pulling too much time. Okay accounting drop down reports and we're going to go into the trial balance trial balance and uh we want 2000 custom date 2023 end of it updated okay 
So uh, if you're if you're following along, your numbers tie out great. If your numbers tied out last time, but they're off this time, they were on before, but they're off now. Uh, we made a change to you would think the accounts would be would would might be off would be the furniture and equipment and of course the loan accounts down here which we changed the names to and then added another loan account to that 5000 that's pretty much all we did even though we talked about a bunch of cool stuff uh as well that everyone was uh undoubtedly completely engulfed in the interesting conversation so uh, if your numbers tie out great, if not, try to change in the date range, drill down into the source document, make any changes that's, that uh, is needed.